Have you ever wondered how engineers construct buildings and structures underwater? In this video, we'll explore the innovative techniques and technologies used to build underwater structures, from foundations to ceiling and waterproofing. Humans have been building structures underwater for centuries, but the challenges of working in the marine environment require specialized knowledge and equipment. Let's explore the innovative techniques and steps involved to build underwater structures. Now here is a fun fact. Did you know that the largest underwater structure in the world is the Burj Khalifa? Although the Burj Khalifa is known primarily as a towering skyscraper on land, it actually has a submerged component as well. The building's foundation extends 50 meters below the surface of the Persian Gulf. There are several different techniques used for underwater construction, depending on the specific project requirements and site conditions. Let's take a look at some of the most common techniques. Scuba diving is one of the oldest and most traditional methods of underwater construction. Divers equipped with specialized tools and equipment are able to work underwater for extended periods of time to perform various tasks such as cutting, drilling, and welding. This method is commonly used for small-scale projects such as underwater repairs, inspections, and maintenance. A coffer dam is a temporary enclosure that is installed around a construction site to keep water out. Workers then pump out the water from within the enclosure to create a dry work environment. This method is commonly used for building bridge piers or performing repairs on existing structures. Now let's dive into the steps involved in underwater construction. This video is divided into different sections to help you understand better. Section 1. Challenges of Building Underwater Structures Building structures underwater presents a unique set of challenges that engineers must overcome. The harsh marine environment, which includes saltwater corrosion, high pressure, and unpredictable currents, can be detrimental to structures. The constant exposure to saltwater can lead to corrosion and weaken structures over time. High pressure can also be an issue, particularly for structures built at significant depths. As the water pressure increases, so does the stress on the structure, which can cause deformations or even collapse. Lastly, unpredictable currents can cause instability and make it difficult to work on the structure. Section 2. Site Survey and Preparation Before any construction can begin, engineers must conduct a site survey and prepare the area for construction. They must take into consideration the topography and geology of the seabed, as well as any obstacles or debris that may interfere with construction. This information is used to plan the placement and design of the structure. The site is then cleared of any debris and leveled to provide a stable base for construction. Section 3. Foundation Installation The first step in building an underwater structure is to install a foundation that can withstand the weight of the structure and the forces of the surrounding water. The type of foundation used depends on the conditions of the seabed and the structure's design. There are several methods of foundation installation, including driving piles into the seabed, caissons, etc. Piling piles are long, slender columns that are driven into the seabed using a pile driver. The pile driver uses a hammer to force the pile into the seabed until it reaches the required depth. This creates a stable base for the structure. Piles can be made from a variety of materials such as steel, concrete, or timber, depending on the specific needs of the project. Caissons Caissons are watertight structures that are used in underwater construction to create foundations for various types of structures such as bridges, and offshore oil platforms. They are typically large, hollow, cylindrical, or rectangular structures that are constructed on land and then transported to the construction site. Once the caisson is placed at the desired location on the seabed, workers pump water out of the structure to create a dry work environment. The caisson is then filled with concrete to form a foundation for the above water structure. Caissons can be built in various shapes and sizes, depending on the specific needs of the project. They can be open at the bottom, allowing workers to pump out the soil beneath the structure and fill it with concrete, known as open caisson. Or they can be closed at the bottom, creating a self-contained structure that does not require excavation, known as box caisson. Alternatively, if the depth of water is more than 12 meters, pneumatic caissons are used. They are closed at the bottom and have a working chamber at the top. Compressed air is pumped into the working chamber to keep water and soil out. Workers then enter the working chamber through an airlock to start working. Section 4. Building the Structure Once the foundation is in place, the structure itself can be built. 
Construction materials vary depending on the purpose of the structure and may include concrete, steel, or other materials. Workers use specialized equipment such as underwater welding tools and hydraulic jacks to connect the pieces of the structure together. One of the most significant challenges in building underwater structures is maintaining visibility. Water can quickly become murky, making it difficult for workers to see what they're doing. To combat this, underwater construction often takes place in controlled environments like underwater habitats or diving bells. These structures provide a clear workspace and allow workers to perform their tasks safely. Section 5. Sealing and Waterproofing To ensure that the structure is watertight, workers must carefully seal all joints and connections. This can be done using a variety of techniques including welding, grouting, and the application of specialized sealants. Welding involves melting two pieces of metal together using heat. Underwater welding is a specialized technique that requires a waterproof welding chamber to be placed over the area that needs welding. Inside the chamber, workers can safely weld the pieces of the structure together. Grouting is another technique used to seal joints and connections. It involves injecting a mixture of cement and water into gaps and crevices between structures. This creates a waterproof barrier that helps to prevent water from penetrating the structure. In addition to welding and grouting, workers may also apply specialized sealants to joints and connections. These sealants are designed to withstand the harsh marine environment and provide an additional layer of protection against water infiltration. Section 6. Maintenance and Inspection Once the structure is complete, it's important to maintain and inspect it regularly to ensure its longevity and safety. This includes regular inspections to check for corrosion, cracks, or other damage. If any issues are identified, they must be addressed immediately to prevent further damage. One of the challenges of maintaining underwater structures is that repairs often have to be made in situ, which requires specialized equipment and training. For example, underwater welding requires specialized equipment and trained professionals to carry out repairs. Here is another fun fact. Did you know that the largest underwater construction project in history is the Seikan Tunnel in Japan? This tunnel stretches over 33 miles and connects the islands of Honshu and Hokkaido. It took over 15 years to build and cost over $7 billion. Thank you for joining us. We hope you learned something new about the steps, challenges, and techniques involved in underwater construction. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to Civil Mentors for more fascinating content like this.